Uh, pleasant day to each and everyone. Our topic for today will all about the, the autonomic nervous system. So the somatic nervous system plus the autonomic nervous system makes up the peripheral nervous system. The autonomic nervous system is not under conscious control. We cannot control the different events that happen in the autonomic nervous system automatically our response to the stimulus or the current environment in the body. And the autonomic nervous system is regulated by the hypothalamus and the brainstem. And the autonomic nervous system supplies nerves to different viscera in our body, internal organs, such as the smooth muscle of the stomach, blood vessels, arteries and veins, the cardiac muscle, of course, the heart and the different glands, especially of the digestive system, including the sweat glands and uh, digestive glands as well. So here you could see the autonomic nervous system is comprised by the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system. And we'll be discussing about the different structures that make up the innervation possible towards the effector glands and organs. So let's compare the uh, somatic nervous system uh, versus the autonomic nervous system, okay? So the somatic nervous system controls skeletal muscle. And once we talk about the skeletal muscle, we can control them consciously. So it's voluntary control. And the motor pathway is comprised of one neuron from the central nervous system to the effector muscle and uh, does not include sensory neurons from skin, skeletal muscles, and special sense organs. And in the somatic nervous system, they all release the neurotransmitter acetylcholine. So let's uh, focus ourselves in this picture. Somatic nervous system, as mentioned here, motor pathway comprised only of one neuron from the central nervous system to the effector uh, muscle, which is the the skeletal muscle, so on, comprised only of one motor neuron, myelinated. <clears throat> Excuse me. As compared to the autonomic nervous system, it controls the viscera, internal organs, and then smooth, uh, up to smooth and cardiac muscles and glands. Of course, uh, have you ever controlled the secretions of the glands inside your body or even uh, the smooth? Uh, the smooth muscles in your body? Of course not. So it's unconscious and it's involuntary. So the motor pathway of the autonomic nervous system is composed of series of two neurons from the central nervous system to the effector. Okay, so we can see here that uh, two, oh, two neurons from the central nervous system to the effector, one and two for the sympathetic, one and two for the parasympathetic. So you, it is composed of the a preganglionic fiber or neuron and a postganglionic fiber or postganglionic neuron because we have ganglions here, okay? Autonomic ganglia or ganglion. So ganglion composed of, composed of cell bodies outside the central nervous system in the uh, in the uh, peripheral nervous system and they serve as relay centers of the uh, nerve impulse. Okay, so it does, does include sensory neurons, monitors the viscera, and it has two divisions, the sympathetic and parasympathetic, and it releases either acetylcholine or norepinephrine or noradrenaline for that matter. We'll discuss about the uh, different neurotransmitters in a while. So this is compare the somatic nervous system and the autonomic nervous system. Somatic nervous system, only one motor neuron directly innervating the skeletal muscle, okay, and releasing the neurotransmitter acetylcholine. In the autonomic Motor pathway, it includes two motor neurons, a preganglionic pre neuron and a postganglionic neuron. Preganglionic neuron from the central nervous system to the neuron in the autonomic ganglion, the release center, 
and the postganglionic neuron from the cell body in the ganglion to the effector. So two uh, neurons, preganglionic and postganglionic neuron. So you can see here the different uh, motor pathways of the uh, autonomic nervous system. This is for the sympathetic, also sympathetic, parasympathetic. Okay, so this is the preganglionic neuron, the autonomic ganglion, and a postganglionic neuron. And it releases uh, norepinephrine. In this picture, effectors are your glands, cardiac muscle in the heart, smooth muscle, like in the urinary bladder. So different smooth muscles in the body that we cannot control. So uh, part also of the uh, sympathetic uh, nervous system would be innervation of the adrenal glands through a sympathetic preganglionic neuron. And it also releases acetylcholine here. And then in turn, the adrenal gland would be able to help in the release of uh, epinephrine and norepinephrine to, uh, to serve as neurotransmitters to, to have an effect to our different blood vessels. And in this picture, parasympathetic preganglionic pre neuron, okay, and then the uh, autonomic ganglion, and then in turn would release acetylcholine. Still, it has effectors to the glands, cardiac muscle, smooth muscle, like in the urinary bladder. Okay. So divisions of the autonomic nervous system, sympathetic division plus the parasympathetic division uh, comprise the autonomic nervous system. And most viscera supplied with nerves of both the sympathetic and parasympathetic divisions have dual innervation, meaning it is innervated by both, com both nerves coming from the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system. The sympathetic and parasympathetic have opposite or antagonistic effects. What does this mean? For example, in the heart rate, Okay, heart rate is the number of beats or number of pumps uh, the heart makes uh, in a minute. In the sympathetic nervous system, it stimulates heart rate. So it increases the heart rate. However, the parasympathetic inhibits heart rate. So it decreases the heart rate. So that, uh, this is what we mean about opposite or antagonistic effects. How about in digestive organs? The sympathetic inhibits uh, the digestive uh, organs function like peristalsis, you know, the movement of the, uh, the food, and then the uh, absorption, and even the secretion of the uh, different digestive juices. Sympathetic nervous system inhibit those. However, in the parasympathetic uh, nervous system, it stimulates. Okay? It wants peristalsis, it wants or it stimulates secretion of uh, gastric juices, etc. So the sympathetic nervous system is uh, otherwise known also as the flight or flight, okay? Uh, full of energy, okay? You want to, this is fight or flight, okay? Fight or flight. And then uh, in parasympathetic nervous system, it's rest and digest. Uh, you want to rest, just cool, chill, and then uh, digest, digest because uh, the, the, Usually, the digestive, uh, the digestive activity is promoted by the parasympathetic nervous system. Some viscera receive only sympathetic nervous system nerves, like the sweat glands, many blood vessels, and hair muscles. Only the sympathetic nervous system nerves. So let's discuss the sympathetic nervous system, sympathetic nervous system. Sympathetic preganglionic neurons have cell bodies located in the la lateral bay of spinal cord segments from T1 to T12, including L1 to L2. Okay, so the sympathetic division is also called your thoracolumbar division. Why? Thoracolumbar because the cell bodies of the sympathetic preganglionic neurons are located in the thoracic and lumbar regions. Thoracolumbar division. Okay. So let's get oriented with the picture here. This is the brain, the spinal cord. The cell bodies are located in the lateral ray of the spinal cord. T1 to T12, L1 to L2. Or simply put, T1 to L2. Okay, so T1 to L2. So they, they, does, 
the cell bodies preganglionic are located here, okay, before the ganglion. Preganglionic nerves or neurons here, the bodies are located here. Sympathetic thoracolumbar. The sympathetic preganglionic neurons, axons pass through ventral roots of the spinal nerves. Remember, uh, the uh, ventral anterior roots, okay? may branch many times, may ascend or descend to many levels of the sympathetic trunk ganglia from cervical to sacral. But this is sympathetic trunk ganglia. Okay, so this one. Okay, sympathetic nerve ganglia. Can synapse with 20 or more postganglionic neuron cell bodies and results widespread sympathetic effect. So the viscera respond in sympathy with one another because the nerves uh, that innervate a particular viscera are widespread. That's the reason why the viscera respond in sympathy with one another. Okay, so uh, preganglionic, the cell bodies of the axons in the preganglionic uh, neuron lie in the spinal cord, lateral cord, and then the cell bodies for the postganglionic uh, nerve fibers will be uh, located in the uh, Sympathetic trunk ganglia. So the sympathetic postganglionic neuron cell bodies are located in the sympathetic trunk ganglia here. Sympathetic trunk ganglia. Two long chains lateral to the vertebrae. So one here and one here. From cervical to sacral regions widespread because uh, it's uh, cervical to sacral regions, uh, widespread sympathetic effect uh, is possible. And many axons from these cell bodies pass back into the spinal nerves to reach also the viscera in the skin, including your sweat glands, hair muscles, and blood vessels. In the sympathetic prevertebral ganglia, anterior to the three large abdominal arteries, its name is derived from the position because it's located anterior to the vertebra, okay? It's prevertebral ganglia, okay? So named celiac, superior and inferior mesenteric ganglia. Okay, so you have here uh, the different ganglia. They supply the abdominal viscera, the stomach, intestine, kidney, liver, and spleen. Actually, it's not only three, but five ganglia. Okay, so you have here the celiac ganglion, Aortic or renal ganglion, superior mesenteric ganglion, renal ganglion, and the inferior mesenteric ganglion. So these are the prevertebral ganglia. Okay, so uh, post ganglionic neurons are located here in your sympathetic trunk ganglia and in the uh, different ganglia that I have mentioned over here. Cilia, aortic or renal, superior mesenteric renal, and your inferior mesenteric ganglion. Axons pass from ganglia to the viscera in the sympathetic nerves. Okay, so pre-ganglionic nerve fiber or pre-ganglionic neuron and the post-ganglionic neuron. So you could see here the legend, okay, the straight line uninterrupted are pre-ganglionic neurons and the broken lines would correspond to the post-ganglionic neurons. Okay, so, and then innervating towards the, uh, the effectors that uh, they are designed to innervate. Okay, so bodies of sympathetic preganglionic neurons are located in the lateral horns, as mentioned, T1 to T12 and L1 to L2. Here, what's the name of this division? Thoracolumbar. Okay, let's jump to your second division, your parasympathetic division, rest and digest division. So the parasympathetic preganglionic neurons, the cell bodies are located in the where? Brainstem and in the spinal cord segments from S2 to S4. Brainstem and S2 to S4. Therefore, the parasympathetic division is also called your craniosacral. Cranial brainstem, sacral S2 to S4. So Let's get oriented with uh, the picture over here. So the nerves, as you could uh, imagine, it's from the brainstem 
and from S2 to S4, not from the uh, thoracolumbar for the uh, for, for your sympathetic nervous uh, division. Axons in the cranial nerves 3, 7, 9, and 10, and in the pelvic nerves from S2 to S4 uh, comprise the parasympathetic nervous system. The okay, vagus nerves, cranial nerve number 10, carry 80% of all parasympathetic nervous impulses. So this is really an important cranial nerve for the parasympathetic nervous division, 80%, just imagine. Vagus nerves carry both motor and sensory neurons to and from the viscera within the thorax and most of the abdominal cavity. And the parasympathetic preganglion axons do not branch or pass through the sympathetic trunk ganglia, but pass directly almost to the viscera. Of course, this is understandable because the sympathetic trunk is for the sympathetic nervous system. Okay, so we have here uh, the brainstem and the sacral region. Craniosacral division, parasympathetic division. Cell bodies for the postganglionic neurons lie in terminal ganglia, the terminal ganglia, located within or near the innervated organ. So what does this mean? We have longer preganglionic nerve fibers for the parasympathetic nervous system because the uh, terminal ganglia for the parasympathetic nervous system are near the innervated organ. So they have longer preganglionic nerve fiber as compared to your sympathetic preganglionic nerve fiber. So parasympathetic nerves cause precise, localized, not widespread effects. Precise, parasympathetic. Because of the anatomical arrangement, sympathetic nerves supply all viscera, but parasympathetic nerves do not reach some viscera because it's not widespread as compared to your sympathetic nervous system. This includes sweat glands, erector pili muscles of hairs in skin, kidneys, spleen, adrenal medulla, and the walls of most blood vessels. So axons pass from ganglia to viscera in parasympathetic, parasympathetic nerves. Okay, so the, these are your different uh, terminal ganglia innervating their respective effectors. So as mentioned, the cell bodies for, of your parasympathetic preganglionic neurons are located in the brainstem nuclei and S2 to S4, craniosacral division. So let's try to compare the, as, uh, the neurotransmitters that uh, the different uh, neurons, both coming from the uh, sympathetic and parasympathetic division, uh, use. Okay? So acetylcholine. Acetylcholine is more commonly released by the uh, different divisions. All sympathetic and parasympathetic preganglionic axons release acetylcholine. All parasympathetic postganglionic axons release also acetylcholine, and some sympathetic postganglionic axons, the sweat glands, also release uh, acetylcholine. To give you a, a clear understanding, so let's get oriented first with this picture. Okay, somatic, directly innervating your skeletal muscle, and then let's focus here autonomic nervous system. So this is your parasympathetic. This is your sympathetic. As I mentioned, your parasympathetic, since your gang, terminal ganglion is near already to your effector, you have longer, okay? You have longer preganglionic nerve fiber or neuron. As compared to your uh, sympathetic or your thoracolumbar division, you have shorter preganglionic nerve fiber, okay? So all sympathetic and parasympathetic preganglionic axons release acetylcholine. All, so this one and this one will release acetylcholine. In your sympathetic preganglionic, it will also release acetylcholine. Okay, acetylcholine. All parasympathetic postganglionic axons release acetylcholine. Para, para releases the uh, 
the postganglionic neuron will also release your acetylcholine. Okay? And some sympathetic postganglionic axons towards the sweat glands release acetylcholine. Sympathetic postganglion. And some sympathetic postganglionic nerve fiber release acetylcholine towards your sweat glands, for example. Okay, so uh, the red uh, words here uh, pertain to your different neurotransmitters. So we're, we're done with the acetylcholine. Okay, all preganglionic nerve fibers, either parasympathetic or sympathetic, basta preganglionic will release acetylcholine. For your parasympathetic, all postganglionic nerve fibers of your parasympathetic uh, preganglionic neurons release your acetylcholine, and some for your sympa postganglionic nerve, nerve neurons release acetylcholine. Okay, for your sweat glands in particular. Acetylcholine is destroyed by your enzyme acetylcholinesterase to short lived response. No, so it will uh, cleave your acetylcholine into acetate and choline. So choline could be, uh, again, be recycled to be part for the production, again, for your acetylcholine. In the uh, pre-ganglionic, uh, pre-synaptic neuron. Okay, so how about your norepinephrine? Your norepinephrine or your noradrenaline is just the same, is less commonly released. It's released by almost all sympathetic postganglionic axons. All, almost all, no? postganglionic sympathetic neurons release your norepinephrine. Okay? Norepinephrine has longer lasting effects enhanced by epinephrine plus norepinephrine plus from the adrenal, adrenal medulla. Okay? Epinephrine and norepinephrine from your adrenal medulla. Adrenal medulla is the uh, inner part of your adrenal gland on top of your kidneys. Okay, So they release your epinephrine and norepinephrine. The green letters here correspond to the receptors that the, uh, the neurotransmitters uh, attach themselves into or activate. Okay, so we have nicotinic receptors for the somatic nervous system. We have muscarinic receptors for your parasympathetic. And we have muscarinic receptor for, uh, for your sweat glands. And we have adrenergic receptors, alpha and or beta, okay, for your norepinephrine. Okay, so a particular neurotransmitter will activate a specific type of receptor. Not all receptors. Okay. So what are the sympathetic effects? Let's compare the effects of sympa and parasympathetic uh, effects. So as mentioned, fight or flight acti activities. Okay. Fight or flight, lalaban ka ba or tatakbo? It's still, it's like an energetic response of the body. So I would, I would like to like, uh, relate the sympathetic effects to uh, more or less a sport, maybe basketball, playing basketball. Because the sympathetic effects include increased heart rate and contraction of the heart, and blood pressure is also increased. Dilated pupils dilate also the airways. No? Dilate vessels to the skeletal muscle, heart, liver, and adipose tissue, so gush of blood. No? Uh, Ang blood is uh, circulating more, okay? And also because of more contraction coming from the heart and increase also of the blood pressure. Constrict blood vessels to non-essential organs like the skin, the gastrointestinal tract, and kidneys. And mobilize nutrients for energy like glucose and fats. So it's like playing basketball. Increase the heart rate, you want to run. Increase pupils, you want to see more. Increase uh, dilated Airways, increased dilated pupils, dilated airways, you want to breathe more, okay? And then dilated, dilated vessels to your the different muscles, heart, liver, and adipose tissue, okay? And for the reproductive, uh, especially for males, uh, ejaculation is part of the sympathetic effect, okay? Ejaculation. 
how about for the parasympathetic effect? Rest and digest. You want to rest and digest. So, gusto mo mag-digest, uh, uh, improve your digestion. So, you want uh, salivation to increase, lacrimation, tearing, urination, digestion, defecation. Okay? Rest and digest. Like, maybe watching a movie. No? Decreased heart rate, rest lang, airway diameter decreased also, pupil diameter is also decreased. So if you have noticed, parasympathetic effect is opposite of your sympathetic effect. Fight or flight for, paras for sympathetic effects, rest and digest for your parasympathetic uh, effects. Mnemonic that we could use would be your slug effects. Salivation, lacrimation, urination, digestion, and defecation. Okay, so uh, we're done with the autonomic nervous system and we could proceed with the somatic senses and the special senses. Special, special senses include your olfaction or the sense of smell, gustation, sense of taste, vision, balance, and hearing. Okay, for the somatic, it includes tactile, touch, pressure, vibration, sense of uh, being able to uh, appreciate uh, the thermal uh, condition, uh, whether if it is a warm or cold environment or are we touching uh, a warm, hot, or even cold object. Pain, proprioception. So it, this includes your joint, the muscle position sense, Movement of limbs and head, proprioception, in coordination with the movement of the body. And then that's somatic. Visceral, when we say visceral, always think about internal, okay? Internal organ conditions. Okay, let's define sensation. It's the conscious or even the subconscious awareness of change in the external or internal environment. Okay, you know that there is a change, we sense it, okay? We acknowledge that there is a change in the stimulus. So what uh, do we require? You know, so that we could say that there is sensation. There is a stimulus, then sensory receptor is being activated, and then neural pathway is also uh, included, and then the brain region is, uh, is important for the integration. So that we could say that there is uh, perception of the stimulus from the stimulus to the receptor to the neural pathway to the brain region where each the nerve impulse should go. Okay, perception is the conscious awareness, and this occurs in the cerebral cortex. Remembering the previous lessons, the Pikachu, wherein Pikachu uh, was caught in uh, tail was caught in fire. And then sensory receptor was innervate, was uh, activated. Then uh, impulse was sent towards the cerebral cortex, and Pikachu <laughs> knows that uh, its tail was caught uh, on fire. Adaptation is the decreased receptor response during prolonged stimulation. No decreased perception. Na. Perception, alam mo talaga, no conscious ka that there is this. There is this taste, there is this smell, you see, no, there is pain. Adaptation, the body adapts if the, the stimulus is prolonged, no, parating may stimulus. So it results to decrease perception. So adaptation speeds, speed varies with the what type of receptor. So there would be rapid adaptation for pressure, touch, or smell. Okay? And then slow adaptation for pain, body position, chemical levels in the blood. So what does this mean? Rapid adaptation, rapid ang decrease ng perception natin, for example, in smell. Okay, notice that when you enter in a room, for example, for example, for smell, pagpasok niyo pa lang ng room, alam niyo na may, for example, may, may durian. No? Alam niyo may durian sa loob ng room. And then for a specific uh, span of time, hindi mo na nanonotice yung smell ng durian. Why? Because the receptors already adapted. There is already acclimatization. Okay? The, there is decreased receptor response during prolonged stimulation. Parating merong ganun na na chemical stimulus sa ating 
uh, olfactory nerves kaya nag-decrease na yung perception we're not we're not that conscious and aware of the smell of the durian as compared to bago pa lang na, na smell natin yung durian no because the, there is rapid adaptation rapid decrease in the perception with smell pressure and touch okay so adaptation for the following so that's what we mean about perception we are, we are aware of uh, and conscious of the sensation and then adaptation nag adapt na siya kaya parang naging manhid parang pain lang no <laughs> Nagiging manhid mo ba kayo? Okay. What are the uh, different structural types of the sensory receptors? Three nerve endings for pain, thermal, fecal, itch, some touch receptors. There's also encapsulated nerve endings for touch, pressure, and vibration. And we have a separate specialized cells located in the hair cells in the inner ear. Structural, may hair cells tayo. And then photoreceptors in the retina of the eye, for example. So these are the different structural types of sensory receptors. How about the functional types? No? Mechanoreceptor for cell deformation, stretching or bending, touch, pressure, and vibration also. Mechanoreceptors. Thermoreceptors, temperature, thermo. Nociceptors, nosy, pain. Photoreceptors, light. Chemoreceptors, taste and smell, wherein we entertain different chemical signals or chemical stimulus and stimuli. Osmoreceptors, osmotic pressure of blood, body fluids. Okay, so these are the different functional types of sensory receptors depending on what stimulus are they activated to. Kung may stimulus na yan, na-activate ba sila? Okay, so we have mechanoreceptor, thermoreceptors, nociceptors, photoreceptors, chemoreceptors, and your osmoreceptors. Okay, let's proceed to somatic senses. Somatic receptors in skin. Somatic, meaning body. No? Somatic receptors in skin, mucous membranes, muscles, tendons, and joints. Soma, body, distributed unevenly. Dense concentration of receptors in very sensitive areas. So distributed unevenly because in some areas in the body or some structures in our body, mas marami ang nerves na present on. Mas, there are some structures like your fingertips, your lips, the tip of your tongue, more receptors for the somatic senses. No? Alam niyang merong nagtatouch sa thermal pain proprioceptive. Sa anong position? Okay, so that's the reason why your fingertips, even when your eyes are closed, you could identify ano yung natatouch niyo. Mainit ba? Hindi niyo nakita. Mainit ba? Malamig? You could identify what that, uh, what that item is you're holding into. Coin ba? <clears throat> no? uh, cookie ba siya? <laughs> Yan. And then, mainit ba siya? And then, it's most especially when you touch something and then my pain na stimulus, no? uh, we know because uh, fingertips, the lips, the tip of the tongue are highly uh, innervated with the different nerves. No? Ang lips, sensitive masyado. Tip of the tongue, kung, when you drink coffee and then it's really hot, sensitive. No? Tip of the tongue, lips and fingertips. How about for tactile sensation? Touch, pressure, and vibration. So uh, uh, we deal with encapsulated mechanoreceptors. For each antical, kiliti, no? chakakate, three nerve endings. For the touch, rapidly adaptating receptors for touch. No? Meissner's uh, corpuscles, hair root plexuses detect hair movement. No? Rapidly adaptating receptors for touch. Because have you noticed uh, when you hold something, no, in a particular uh, duration of time, hindi nyo na alam na, or hindi na kayong conscious sa hinahawakan ninyo. Like, holding hands, holding the bag, or when you sit, no, pag-sit ninyo, feel nyo sa pet ninyo na merong upuan, pero 
after some time, hindi, nyo na, hindi ka na conscious na in, uh, nagtatouch yung purpose of one. Okay? Something like that. Then, slowly adaptating receptors for touch, like your type 1 mechanoreceptors, Merkel discs, or tactile discs, for the surface receptors in the epidermis, slowly adaptating. And type 1 mechanoreceptors, like your uh, Ruffini corpuscles, deep in the dermis and tendons. So these are different uh, mechanoreceptors that are slowly adaptating receptors for touch. How about, how about for pressure and vibration? For pressure, pasinian, lamellated corpuscles, layer like onions, now rapidly adaptating also and widely distributed in the dermis, subcutaneous, around the joints, tendons, muscles, and the periosteum. For the vibration, vibration, response to rapidly repetitive stimuli. No? Kasi nga, vibration, repetitive ang stimulus niya, ang stimuli. So receptors for this the vibration would be your Meissner and Pacinian uh, receptors. Okay? So uh, here's a picture where your structure and location of sensory receptors are. No? So this is your skin, epidermis, dermis, and the scapitaneous layer. Free nerve endings are located here, epidermis, particularly for the sense of pain, itch, tickle, cold, or warm. Pag-touch pa lang ng structure dito, alam na nating malamig or mainit. Alam nating may lamok na naka na nagsasak ng blood or pinagat ka ng lamok. Okay? Type 1 cutaneous mechanoreceptor, Rufini is type 2. Okay? Type 1 cutaneous mechanoreceptor, tactile disc, senses continuous touch and pressure. Corpuscle of touch or your Meissner's corpuscle senses onset of touch and low frequency vibrations. Your type 2 cutaneous mechanoreceptor, Ruffini corpuscle senses skin stretching and pressure, Ruffini. Your hair root, no? hair root plexus sense movements on skin surface that disturbs hair. Pag touch pa lang ng hair natin, no? alam na natin uh, merong stimulus na nag, uh, nag to change ang direction ng hair natin. When we brush our hair, for example, lamellated pasinian sends high frequency vibrations. Okay, layers like onion, lamellated corpuscle. Type two ang rufini. Okay, type two mechanoreceptors. Okay, so let's proceed to the itch and tickle, kilite and kate. Itch, chemical simulation of free nerve endings. Due to the bradykinin that is released, it's a chemical mediator, usually from inflammation response. So itching might probably be a sign that uh, there is a beginning, uh, it's a symptom, na? that there is a beginning uh, inflammation process that is going on. Okay? Pickle, kilite, from free nerve endings and pacinian corpuscles. Pickle requires stimulus from outside of cell. You cannot tickle yourself because effects of attempts to tickle oneself are blocked by signals to and to or from the cerebellum. Block siya. Kung ikaw ang nagtitikal sa self. Usually. How about thermal sensation? Two kinds of thermal receptors, cold and warm. Cold receptors are located in the epidermis, 10 to 40 degrees Celsius. Warm receptors more located in the dermis. 32 to 48 degrees Celsius, but both adapt rapidly but continue slow signals during prolonged stimulus. Outside these ranges, nociceptors detect pain. Masakit na kung sobrang lamig. Masakit na kung sobrang init. Okay? So, nociceptors detect, nociceptors detect pain. So, outside these ranges. Nociceptors na because nosi, pain. Nociceptors. Pain sensations, so we talk about nociceptors. The free nerve endings in every tissue except brain can respond to any excessive stimulus. Sobrang pressure, sobrang sharp, no? sobrang uh, high ng temperature, sobrang low ng temperature. So minimal adaptation. No? Hindi ka nag, basta basta nagiging manhid, manhid for pain. Kung masakit, masakit talaga. 
No? So, this is also for, to protect our body from uh, the from excess stimulus na uh, na sobra, no? To protect us from burning ourselves, to protect us from uh, hurting ourselves, no? Kaya minimal ang adaptation na for pain. Types of pain, we have past pain, acute and sharp pain, well localized. Alam natin saan ang kagat ng lamo. Sa, sa, alam natin saan ang sugat when there is uh, an abrasion, for example, gas-gas, or nakat kayo ng knife or something sharp. We know, well localized. Ha, but in slow pain, chronic burning, aching, throbbing pain, more diffuse, not localized, sasabihin lang natin parang ang... Uh, tawag nito muscle pain ko nasa likod parang dyan masakit sa taas sa right side Ganyan. hindi siya clear because it's more diffuse no? chronic pain long pain burning pain this could happen sa digestive tract especially in our gastro gastric area uh, the stomach area because of the acidity there, it could cause burning pain in gastroesophageal reflux disease, for example, in GERD, reflux na ang, ang acid, hydrochloric acid, aching, para siyang uh, ngulngul. Yeah? Uh, ngulngul, there is a discomfort proceeding to pain. Throbbing is pain that is like pulsating. Sakit, hindi. Parang sakit, hindi. Sakit, hindi. Throbbing, like in headache, for example. Then there is what we call referred pain. No? Referred pain is a visceral pain displaced to a surface. The origin of the stimulus of the pain is not really coming from that area. However, pain is also felt somewhere externally. That's what we call referred pain. May kasabay sa pain. For example, kung masakit ba ang uh, chest area mo at this level, so masakit din ba ang arm, forearm, or a medial part ng hand mo? Okay? Because this is are the different uh, like maps, okay? The distribution of the referred pain. Because nociceptors or receptors for pain are present in almost every tissue of the body. And this is how they are distributed. No? For the liver and gallbladder, gallbladder, upper right shoulder, Heart, usually for chest pain, especially when the patient has decreased oxygenation for the heart and its muscles, and it could result to the dying of the skeleton at the uh, cardiac muscles that results to myocardial infarction, for example. Usually, merong pain talaga from chest towards the medial portion of the hand, forearm, and the arm. Kaya, we could really say during interview palang. And physical examination, you can say, oh, my problem siguro talaga si sir sa heart, more or less. Okay, so these are the different distributions of referred pain, anterior and posterior. Okay, please familiarize yourself. Okay, how about your proprioception or kinesthesia? Okay, you are aware of your body position, nakatayo pa, nakaupo. Are you standing on one foot or not? Your movements, you know that you're already raising your hand, clapping, cooking, and you, you also know the weight of the objects, which one is more uh, heavy as compared to another. Okay, sites of receptors, the muscles, tendons, the joint, and inner ear. These different structures help you for proprioception. Alam mo ano yung position ng body ninyo. Alam nyo naka-invert ba kayo or not, even when your eyes are closed. No, sites of receptors no, are located in your muscle spindles, tendons, your synovial joints, your hair cells located in your inner ear that you will be discussing in a while for your head position. Tracks to the somatosensory area of the cerebral cortex and the cerebellum. And then this is a slight adaptation lang mga receptors for your proprioception. Okay, so we'll discuss the different uh, special senses now. Let's start with olfaction or your sense of smell. The site of olfactory receptors are located in your mucosa of the superior region of the nose. So let's get oriented with the picture. This is a sagittal view of your face. Okay, so we could see here the different 
uh, turbinates, no? turbinates resemble the medial or lateral, the lateral portion of your nasal cavity. And you can see here the receptors for your olfaction. No? So three types of olfactory cells are here. Olfactory, re olfactory receptors consist of olfactory hairs with chemoreceptors. And these are first order neurons of olfactory pathway. Review what are first order neurons. Nga. These are neurons that send the signal or impulse from the peripheral nervous system towards the, the, uh, the spinal cord. Okay, towards the spinal cord. So consists of olfactory hair hairs. Okay, so because bucket chemoreceptors, because the odor has uh, is a chem chemical signal, chemical component. Siya. Okay, so you could see here the uh, olfactory receptors. And then we have supporting cells composed of epithelial cells, support and protect. Uh, the, the receptors, and we have basal cells. Stem cells that produce new cells, new, new neurons or receptors throughout life. Okay, this is rare. Nah? So we have odorant molecule of olfactory cilia here. So we have here the olfactory receptor cells. Okay, and then supporting cells. Olfactory receptors. We have supporting cells, and then we have the basal cells over here. Uh, receptors, no? receptors, cells, and uh, for the identification of an odor, the chemical stimulus. Yun. First order neurons, olfactory receptors are neurons in the nasal mucosa, olfactory receptors. So these are all part of your olfactory nerve, pain nerve number one, sense of smell, olfaction. Axons from olfactory nerves, cranial nerve number one, extend through the cubiform plate, which is the upper portion. It's like the roof of your nasal cavity, cribiform plate, and extend through the cribiform plate into the cranium to the olfactory bulb. No, punta siya sa olfactory bulb. So this is your cribriform plate. Extend the yung first order neurons from the cribriform plate into the cranium to the olfactory bulb. Pasok siya through the cribriform plate towards the olfactory bulb. This is your olfactory bulb. Punta siya dyan. Okay. Second order neurons. Neuron cell bodies in olfactory bulb. Uh, including your olfactory tract, axons extend from the olfactory bulb to the cerebral cortex or your temporal lobe no? for your second order neurons. This olfaction or your olfactory pathway include your limbic system, emotional response to odors. Okay, limbic system, emotional response to odors. It's like when you smell something, alam yung naamoy ka na to dati. And then there would also be instances when you smell something. This reminds me of my parents, or this reminds me of my my lover, no? Na itong amoy na ito, and then you get emotional. Sure, emotional, pwede happy, sad, <laughs> angry. So let's proceed. Two gustation, no? A sense of Taste. Five primary primary tastes: salt, sweet, sour, bitter, and umami. And perception of what is called taste includes olfactory input. No, e, with the scent, scent and the taste. No, corresponds with one another. And receptors in ten thousand taste buds located on tongue, pharynx, and epiglottis in structures called papillae. Papillae, located uh, uh, different papillae. Valate, fungiform, and filiform no? spread uh, on the surface of your tongue. Posterior part, vale. All over, fungiform. And then for touch receptors would be your filiform, papillae. Okay. So your, the structure of your taste bud 
contains three types of epithelial cells. What are these three? Supporting cells that surround. We have su different supporting cells. Gustatory receptor cells. No? Gustatory receptor cells. Gustatory hair. No, meron siyang hair. Projects from receptor through taste pore. This is your taste pore. And then basal cells. Basal cells. Stem cells that produce supporting cells that develop into receptor cells. 10-day lifespan only. Okay, so here in your tongue, this is the details of your papillae. No? Filiform, fungiform, and your valid papillae. And then here in cut section, meron na tayong taste bud. So maraming taste bud ang nasa tongue. No? For example, so it is composed of, the taste bud is composed of the basal cell, gustatory receptor cell, and uh, you have your supporting cells. So uh, it's attached to a first order taste neuron. Okay? Kaya alam natin mayroong lasa. Okay? So this is the gustatory pathway. No? And we will discuss why, and maybe you have already an idea why your facial nerve is included, glossopharyngeal nerve is included, and even your vagus nerve. Okay? Towards the primary gustatory area of cerebral cortex. Located here. Siyempre, punta mo na siya sa thalamus. Okay? If you could remember for the uh, first order, second order, and third order neurons, first order neurons coming from the peripheral, periphery towards the spinal cord uh, or the brain stem. Okay? Spinal cord or the brain stem. Second, a spinal cord or brain stem towards the thalamus, the neurons. And the third order would be from the thalamus to your uh, cerebral cortex, to your somatosensory area. Okay? So stimulation of taste receptors, what happens? Sequence of events. So taste that dissolves in saliva, it enters the taste pore. It enters the taste pore, no? yung kinain ninyo. And then contacts the satori here. And it produces an electrical signal. This electrical signal causes gustatory cell to release a neurotransmitter that activates dendrites of the first order neurons. Okay, so coming from the food, taste for towards the first, uh, producing a signal that activates the first order taste neuron. Okay, then adaptation occurs within minutes. Now, that's the reason why maybe if you eat a food, no, mas masarap sa, kung, sa unang tikim. Okay? Mas masarap sa unang tikim. Would you agree? Mas masarap. Especially if it's your favorite food. Okay? Different tastes arise from activation of different groups of taste neurons. Okay, gustatory pathway, cranial nerves transmit impulses. So, 7, 9, and 10 are involved because your facial is for the uh, anterior two-thirds of the tongue taste. Glossopharyngeal, posterior one-third. Your vagus is also involved because of the taste receptors found in your pharynx and epiglottis. 10. Kaya nga naging my sense my uh, sensory part ang vagus nerve din, including this one, the taste receptors, for pharynx and epiglottis, aside from the others. To the medulla oblongata, no, so brainstem na, then towards the thalamus, towards the primary gustatory area of the cerebral cortex. Okay, so limbic system or hypothalamus is also involved. Okay. So let's proceed with vision. Na? So we need to discuss about the eyes and the structures. Accessory structures of the eyes include your eyebrows, eyelashes for protection, eyelids protection and lubrication. That's why we blink because the uh, lubricant or the uh, tears is being spread and it also protects the eye. Protects the eye from drying. Extrinsic muscle move eyeballs 
the extraocular muscles, the two oblique muscles, and the four recti muscles. We have the lacrimal apparatus that produces tears. So from the lacrimal gland to the lacrimal ducts to the surface of the upper eyelid, now to the surface of the eye, towards the lacrimal canals, ang drainage na lacrimal sac, miso lacrimal duct, miso cavity. Don't worry, I have a picture that I will share to you in a while. Okay. So surface anatomy, eyebrows, eyelashes. The palpebral fissure is this, you know, elliptical shape. No? It's the space between the upper and the lower eyelids that exposes the eyeball. Ito ang palpebral fissure natin. This, this is the medial canthus, lateral canthus of the eye. Okay, so this is the palpebral fissure. Lower eyelid, upper eyelid. Okay. So, this is a sagittal section of the eye. This is the eyeball, eyelid, eyelashes curved outwards. This would be your eyebrow. And then you could appreciate here the muscles. Uh, for a uh, certain eye movement, no? orbicularis oculi muscle. And then you have tarsal glands for, uh, that contribute to the lubrication. It uh, produces a secretion na may oil, no? lubricant for the, uh, the eye, especially the cornea. We have the cornea here, the iris, the lens, the pupil is in between the space in your iris. And then this is your eyeball, the optic nerve, cranial nerve number two. So you have also the superior rectus muscle over here, inferior rectus muscle. Okay. This is what I'm talking about for the lacrimal apparatus. No, lacrimal gland that produces tears and it would be, it's located at the upper outer quadrant of the eye. No, so you have here excretory lacrimal duct, punta dito ang tears. And then the close, no? <clears throat> Your lacrimal gland secretes tears. The excretory lacrimal ducts, this one, the ducts, distribute tears over surface of the eyeball. The superior or inferior lacrimal canaliculi drain tears into no? superior and the inferior lacrimal canaliculi will drain into the lacrimal sac. No? Lacrimal sac. And uh, which drains tears into the nasolacrimal duct. Nasolacrimal duct. Nasolacrimal. Naso, ilong, lacrimal eyes. Which drains tears into the nasal cavity. So, from here to here. Okay, so notice that when you cry, your nose also cries. Sinisipon kayo because tears are drained more towards the nasal cavity. Okay? A question, when was the last time you cried? Happy crying, even from laughing, di ba? We tear up, nagsisipon din. And also for crying, sad kayo. Okay? Kaya uh, nagkakry din yung nose niya. Okay, so what are the layers of your eyeball? We have three. First layer would be your fibrous tunic. Anteriorly, it is composed of your cornea, here and colorless structure, cornea. Posteriorly, it's your sclera. No? Puti dapat ang sclera ninyo. White of the eye. Because kung mag yan, we term it as icterus, icteric sclerae. Maybe because of uh, increase in bilirubin, for example. Second layer would be your vascular tunic. Consists of three choroid, ciliary body, and your iris. Your choroid lines most of the internal surface of the eye, contains blood vessels that nourish the eye. Kaya siya vascular tunic, blood vessels that nourish the eye. Choroid. Ciliary body consists of the ciliary processes and ciliary, ciliary muscles. Ciliary processes secrete aqueous humor, which is a fluid for the anterior part of your eye that maintains the moisture. Ciliary muscles change shape of the uh, lens for focusing, for uh, accommodation. And then the iris is the pigmented part of the eye, blue, brown, or green. Uh, this gives the 
the iris gives the component uh, of the eye the color. Okay? Uy, maganda yung mata niya. Brown, light brown, dark brown, green, blue. Smooth. The iris is smooth muscle that dilates or constricts the pupil. Okay? And then the pupil hold for passage of light. So fibrous tunic, vascular tunic, and the retina is the third layer. Okay? Composed of two layers, the neural and the pigmented layer. The neural layer, outgrowth of brain, photo, photoreceptor layer, bipolar cell layer, and ganglion cell layer. Three layers ang neural layer ng retina. So photoreceptor, merong rods and cones, the receptors. Bipolar cell layer, may, merong mga bipolar cells. Your ganglion cell layer, axons of neurons here form the optic nerve or your cranial nerve number two that exits the eye at the optic disc, which is also considered as your blind spot. Why? Because there are no rods and cones located here. Rods and No rods and cones at this area, blind spot. And the second layer of your retina would be your pigmented layer, helps absorb stray light between the choroid and the neural layer. Okay, so this is a uh, superior view of a transverse section of your right eyeball. So again, the three layers or the wall of your eyeball consists of three layers. Fibrous, vascular tunic, and your retina. Okay, let's start with your vascular, uh, your fibrous tunic, cornea, outer to inner layer style. Huh? So for your fibrous tunic, ano, yung, uh, ano nga yung mga structures? It includes your cornea and your sclera. Cornea clear, okay? Cornea clear, clara white. Clara white. Cornea clear, sclera white. Cornea clear, sclera white. Okay, next layer would be your vascular tunic. What are your vascular tunic? Choroid, ciliary body, and your iris. Choroid vascular, okay? Choroid vascular, cor sorry, vascular, choroid, ciliary body, and your iris. Vascular, you know, may mga dots. Okay? Choroid. Choroid, ciliary body composed of ciliary muscle and process, and your iris. Iris. This one would be your ciliary processes. Ciliary body composed of the ciliary muscle and your processes. But muscle and processes. Okay? And your retina, this one would be your retina, innermost layer. This is your blind spot over here. Because uh, walang rods and cones located at this area. Okay, so this is your iris, the color of your eye, the pupil. Iris, pupil, ciliary processes that uh, secrete case humor. Okay, so... Let's go to the pupillary response to light. Once there is a light stimulus, the normal response would be the pupils should be equally round. The shape is round. And they should be responsive to the light. No? Right? By constricting. No? They should constrict. Which is the pupillary constriction is a a uh, parasympathetic response. Dilation would be sympathetic response. People constrict as circular muscles of the iris contract. When this contract, humiliate yung pupil of the iris. Na? When the uh, radial muscles contract, this one contract, they shorten. No? They shorten. It makes the pupil dilate. Talaki yung pupil. So when the circular muscles contract, pupillary constriction happens. When the radial muscles contract, there would be pupillary dilation. Okay? 
dilation, sympathetic response, constriction, parasympathetic response. Okay, how about the photoreceptors? We have the rods and cones photoreceptors. No? So rods uh, for the black and white vision, 120 million. Cones, color sensitive, no? rainbow cones. Mnemonic that we could use for cones and rods. Ang rods, usually pampalo. Black and white lang yan. Ang cones, di ba, ice cream ang ilalagay dyan. Different flavors of ice cream. Color sensitive. Six million cones. Three types sensitive to blue, green, or red light. Color vision results from combined input ng different lights. No? And cones mostly in the central fovea in the center of the macula lutea of the eye, where the point of highest visual acuity uh, is located, the sharpness. No? Center of the macula lutea, central fovea. So the visual pathway, uh, the photoreceptor cells, uh, the light stimulus, no? travels photoreceptor cells, the rods and cones towards the bipolar cells, towards the ganglion cells, the axons forming the optic nerve. No? So let's get oriented with the picture here. No? The visual signals as the, these three layers, photoreceptor cell layer, bipolar cell layer, and the ganglion cell layer. Okay, photoreceptor the bipolar cell, and the ganglion cell. Merong rods and cones here. You have your bipolar cells here. Bipolar cells, horizontal and amacrine cells, and then your ganglion cells over here. Then wherein they form to make up your op optic nerve or cranial nerve number two. Okay. Two cavities separate by the lens. You have an anterior and posterior cavity. Okay? I would like to use more cavity. So this is the lens. This is the anterior cavity. Posterior cavity. Okay? Anterior cavity and posterior cavities have fluids. Anterior cavity, aqueous fluid. Posterior cavity, vitreous fluid. Okay? The anterior cavity is filled with aqueous humor, aqueous humor, clear color, colorless fluid secreted from capillaries in ciliary body, no? capillaries from the ciliary body, and completely replaced over every 90 minutes. And establishes intraocular pressure, maintains eye the shape, nourishes lens and cornea, and drains into the blood in scleral venous sinus or the canal of phlegm. No, scleral venous sinus or canal of Schlem. This portion here makes up the uh, aqueous humor from the anterior, from the ciliary body. Okay, ciliary body. Gawa siya ng aqueous humor. Punta siya dito. Exit through the pupil towards the anterior chamber. Drain towards the scleral venous or the canal of Schlem. How about the vit vitreous chamber? This is your vitreous chamber over here. Filled with gel like vitreous body, not replaced as compared to your, like your aqueous humor, and holds retina back against the, uh, the choroid. Okay, holds the retina closely associated or holds it back against the uh, choroid. Okay? Sige. In physiology of vision, there are three steps. Forming the image on the retina, stimulation of the photoreceptors, rods and cones, and then the visual pathway. Nerve impulses pass towards the cerebral cortex. Okay? Formation of the image in the retina, simulation of the photoreceptors, rods and cones, and then the visual pathway, nerve impulses, reaches your cerebral cortex. 
And then, in the first step, formation of image and the retina, there are four steps. Refraction, accommodation, constriction of pupil, and then convergence of eyeballs. Refraction or simply bending of light. Hindi lang straight ang light apuntang retina. We bend them. Accommodation, this means the changing the shape of the lens. No? Thick lens for near sight. Thin lens, mapayat, or flatten when you look afar. Then there would be constriction, control mo yung light, no? by the constriction of the pupil to control the amount of light entering the eye. And then convergence of eyeballs. Eyeballs are able to look towards in, inside, the inside. No? Convergence of eyeballs for binocular vision. Refraction, accommodation, constriction, convergence. Refraction, bending of light lang, di ba? Bending of light rays as they pass from the region of one density to another of different density. 75% of the refraction or the bending of the light occurs at the cornea, the, uh, the superficial anterior part, the clear part. Lens also help focus light on the retina. No? So, meron siyang refraction power. Image is inverted, but brain adjusts and interprets distance and size. So, here, you could see light ray before refraction. Kung meron ng refraction because of the change in uh, density, there is already bending of the light. Second, accommodation. Flat and thin. Ah, flat and thin lens or thick or uh, bulging <laughs> lens. Okay, so lens adjust shape for distance to allow image to focus on retina. For distant objects, ciliary muscles relax. Flat lens. Distant, flat ang lens natin. Distant, you know, let's get oriented here. Distant ang object, we need to uh, flatten. No? The lens flatten, the ciliary muscles are relaxed. Zonular flat fibers are taut, no? tightened. So kung dito, when we look afar, no? when we look afar, the zonular fibers tighten. Zonular fibers tighten or are taut, taut. And then ciliary muscles relax. Ciliary muscles relax. So the lens flatten. As compared to when we look at something near, something near, no? The ciliary muscles contract, ciliary muscles contract, thus the, uh, the lens are more spherical or they become rounder, mas lumalaki, no? ciliary mas lumalaki. Now this is to focus the, the stimulus more in a specific location in the retina dito. Kasi kung sobra or short ka sa pag-focus, there would be blurring uh, of the vision. Okay? Ayan. Distant, flat lens, close up vision, fat lens. Okay? Rounder, mataba. So this is just to appreciate more the lens, the zonular fibers no, that are attached to your lens, and your uh, ciliary processes that are part of your uh, ciliary body. So this is just the flow of your aqueous humor. No? The, this is your anterior cavity. Okay, anterior cavity composed of a posterior chamber and an anterior chamber. The anterior and posterior chambers are divided by your iris. Ang nasa anterior ng iris mo is the anterior chamber. Posterior to your iris is your posterior chamber. Anterior to your lens is your anterior cavity. Posterior to your lens is your posterior cavity or your vitreous chamber. Okay, I hope you get that. Okay. So there are visual disorders, no? Myopia, hyperopia, astigmatism, presbyopia. Myopia, 
you have nearsightedness. Can see near but not far. Eyeball is too long so lens cannot accommodate enough to focus images of distant objects onto the retina. This one is a myopic eye, no? nearsighted. Why? Eyeballs, eyeball is too long, mahabang eyeball. Ang lens hindi maka-accommodate, hindi, hindi na kaya ma-accommodate so that the focus reaches the retina, dito lang. No? So there is, you could, the patient can only see your near sight, no? yung malapit lang. But if we correct it with concave lens, no? so the vision is corrected with concave lens. In hyperopia, farsightedness, the patient can see far but not near. Why? Because the eyeball is opposite. Eyeball is too short, just like in this picture. Eyeball is too short, so lens cannot accommodate no? enough to focus images of near objects onto the retina. Naglampas na because the eyeball is too short. Too short. No? So we correct it with convex lens. No? Concave and convex lens are types of lens ng uh, eyeglasses ninyo. So that we could, we could correct the refraction now. Uh, the, we could focus the <clears throat> we could focus the image at a specific point in the retina. Huh? Dito ang sumobra because the eyeball is short. So with convex lens, corrected na ang vision. Okay? In astigmatism, there is ir irregular curvature of the cornea or lens that causes or results to not a specific point na refraction, but madaming, uh, madaming areas in the retina ang, na ang nare-reflect yung light stimulus. Okay? Because of the astigmatism, the irregular curvature. So blurry ang vision kasi, kasi maraming hindi specific ang stimulus ng light. And in press biopia, when you read press, okay, you think about old age. No? Aging change, there would be loss of elasticity of the lens, and there's also farsightedness. Then uh, reading glasses is uh, recommended. And then these disorders can be corrected with lenses, concave or convex lenses, and then, uh, or with your LASIK surgery, laser assisted in cytokeratomeliosis, okay, LASIK uh, procedure. Steps three and four, constriction and convergence, constriction of the pupil, autonomic parasympathetic reflex to, to prevent excessive light rays, constriction of the uh, pupils by contraction of the circular muscles of the iris, and convergence again would be rotating inwards of your eyes for binocular vision and by contraction of your extrinsic eye muscles. My coordination of different muscles, extraocular muscles natin, so that the eyes can rotate inward to focus uh, a particular image, clearer vision. Okay, so we're done with the first part with the four steps of the first part. Okay? Second part would be stimulation of the photoreceptors, rods and cones. For your photoreceptors, light, okay, would be your uh, neural signal, would be turned into a neural signal. In rods, light is absorbed by a photopigment, rhodopsin, which splits into opsin and retinal and leads to receptor potential. Opsin is a glycoprotein and retinal is a derivative of your vitamin A. Okay, vitamin A deficiency decreases rhodopsin production and leads to night blindness. Hirapan uh, mak makakita sa poorly lit room no, or environment or blind talaga. Hindi makakita because of the vitamin A deficiency which is uh, placed on important part for uh, the retinal part, okay? In cones, light is absorbed by three opsins and then uh, receptor potential for color vision. So in color blindness, red or green cones are missing. No? Red, uh, the three opsins, blue, red, and green. 
Okay, so we proceed with the visual pathway. So from the rods or cones towards the bipolar cells, towards the ganglion cells, and the axons of the uh, ganglion cells form the optic nerve or your cranial nerve number two. So we have here uh, the cranial nerves. Okay, we have uh, a temporal temporal side and a nasal or medial side. Lateral, temporal, medial or the nasal part of your cranial nerve number two. 50% of these axons cross over to the opposite side of the brain in the optic chasm. This is the optic chasm. 50%. So the nasal part of your cranial nerve will be the one that will cross over towards the opposite side. Nasal part will cross over to the opposite side. Nasal part will cross over to the opposite side. And axons continue on into the optic tract. So this is your optic tract already. The optic tracts are composed of the temporal side of your cranial nerve and the nasal part of the opposite nerve that has already crossed over. Okay? And this optic tract will terminate and synapse in the thalamus at the lateral geniculate nucleus of the thalamus. And signal will be sent to your occipital lobe of the cerebral cortex. The right brain sees the left side of the object. The left brain sees the right side of the object opposite. Okay? So, here, this part, lateral, or the temporal part, sees this part. This part, We'll see this part, this part, we'll see this part, this part, we'll see this part. Since the nasal cranial nerve will cross over, okay, this results to the right brain, the brain seeing the opposite side of the object. Why? So, ang makikita nito, so here, what, uh, what, Cranial parts of the cranial nerves are located here. This side, one, two, three, and four. So, C1 and three, diba? C1 na lateral and C3 na medial. Okay, so one and three. So, one and three, one will see this one, and three will see this one, this side. So, the left part will see the right. And through with the other side, this side, C2 and 4. No, 2, nasal part, 4, which is the lateral part, 2 and 4. 2 will see this part, 4 will see this part. So the right side will see the left side of the object. The light, right brain will see the left side of the object. That's your visual pathway. From the optic nerve to your optic chasm, decusation your optic tract, lateral geniculate nucleus of the thalamus, optic radiation here, and to, towards your primary visual area of the cerebral cortex area, functional area 17 in the occipital lobe, sa likod, occipital lobe. Okay, so let's proceed to the hearing and equilibrium air structure. Outer ear is composed of your auricle. This is your auricle here. Para funnel siya. Funnel that uh, directs the sound waves papunta sa external auditory canal mo. So auricle, external auditory canal, and your tympanic membrane or your eardrum. So your outer ear is composed also of your tympanic membrane, ha? your eardrum. Part siya ng outer ear. Then the canal contains hairs and ceruminous glands. Your middle ear is also called your uh, auditory uh, it's a cavity, no? Auditory tube or your station tube, and then meron siyang ossicles, the small bones, the malleus incus, and stapes. Your stapes, the oval part of your stapes, the base of your stapes is attached to the oval window. 
which is also already the, a part of your inner ear. Your inner ear is made up of your bony and membranous labyrinth filled with endolin. Okay? Your membranous labyrinth is filled with endolin. But your bony labyrinth is filled with your perilin. Okay? Cochlea is a sense organ of hearing. The vestibule and semicircular canals are for balance. Okay? That's why hearing and equilibrium. What's the cranial nerve that uh, is related with this one? It's your cranial nerve number eight, vestibular cochlear. Vestibular part, balance, cochlear part, hearing. Okay, so this is your external ear, middle ear, inner ear. It's your oracle. External auditory canal, tympanic membrane, or your eardrum. You have the cavity here for your middle ear. Malleus, incus, and stapes, your ossicles. No? And then you have your uh, inner ear here, composed of your cochlea, your semicircular canals, and then uh, you could appreciate also here the uh, Trainer number eight, uh, vestibular branch, cochlear branch. Okay. Bigger picture for your uh, for your ossicles, malleus, incus, and stapes, or your hammer, anvil, and stirrup because of their shape. And then, yeah, so you could also see uh, different muscles and uh, ligaments that play part in the connections of your ossicles. Tensor tympani, that would help dampen the, the sound para hindi masyadong malakas from the vibration coming here. It dampens also the, uh, the sound waves, the vibration. And then the ligaments for the position of the different ossicles. We have here an auditory tube or your pharyngotympanic tube. Your pharyngotympanic tube. So this drains to your pharynx, the pharynx part. So there's a connection between your ear and your mouth. Mouth part, the posterior, posterior part of your oral cavity. Pharynx part. Okay. Your inner ear structure have three uh, regions. Vestibule includes the two sacs, utricle and saccule. This is your uh, utricle. This is your saccule over here. Utricle, saccule. Semicircular canals at right angles. Semicircular canals, you have three. Contain membranous semicircular ducts. Ang canals, merong ducts sa loob. Canal, may ducts sa loob. Okay? Each end in a swelling known as an ampulla. Ampulla, ampulla, ampulla. Swelling. Okay? And then cochlea have three levels. The cochlear duct. Membranous has endolymph. Contains spiral organ, which is the sensory organ for hearing. No? Above would be your scala vestibuli ends at the oval window. And below will be your scala tympani ends at the round window. This is your oval window. This is your stapes. Stapes in oval window because the... the the base of the stapes, no? the base of the stapes is ends at the uh, oval window. This is your round window over here. O R, okay, O R, oval window, round window. You could see here the cochlea turns, okay, it turns at uh, two and a half times, okay, two and a half times. 
So you can see here the ayan, the three parts of the uh, cochlea, three levels, cochlear duct, scala vestibuli, scala tympani. Okay, cochlear duct, scala vestibuli, scala tympani. Scala vestibuli ends at the scala vestibuli ends at the oval window, while your scala tympani ends at the round window. Scala tympani ends at the round window below. Okay. Just appreciating here the uh, the cranial nerve number eight, vestibular cochlear nerve, cochlear nerves. Punta siya sa hearing na part. Okay. So this one, when we uh, when we zoom in over here, you would be able to appreciate this one section of your cochlea. No, your spiral organ or your organ of 40, this one, sits on the basilar membrane or the floor of your cochlear duct. This is your basilar membrane. No? So this is your spiral organ or, or your organ of 40. It contains supporting cells and hair cells. Now, kung i-zoom in natin, it has supporting cells and hair cells. No? Outer and inner hair cells. And the hair cells are covered with jelly-like pectoral membrane. Are receptors for auditory sensations. Auditory sensations, the vibrations and the like. Auditory sensations, sound. Synapse with sensory neurons in the branch of the vestibular cochlear nerve, cranial nerve number eight, cochlear branch. So you could appreciate here ang inner hair cells no? attached to the cochlear branch of the vestibular cochlear nerve. This is for hearing because the organ for hearing is your spiral organ, this one, or your organ of 40. <clears throat> so what are the events in the simulation of the, of the auditory receptors in the uh, this of the ear, okay? So the cochlea has been uncoiled here because, diba, it turns that two and a half times. And uncoiled na lang dito para mas makita ninyo yung flow ng vibration and uh, the, the, the vibration of the sound. The sound waves and their distortion of the vestibular and basilar membranes of the cochlear duct. Hair cells of the spinal organ or your organ of 40 convert a mechanical vibration. Mechanical lang, convert niya to an electrical signal which is a receptor potential. No? So, impulse na siya papunta sa, sa brain for uh, interpretation. No? So, what happens? So, sound waves uh, are collected gamit ang uh, uh, pina no? or your oracle. So, sound waves in the air goes to your auditory canal or your external auditory canal. Then it's the tympanic membrane. Vibration occurs. Then the ossicle also vibrates. No? Malleus, incus, and stapes. And then stapes strikes the oval window. Kasi nga, the base of the stapes uh, is attached to the oval window. This is the oval window. This is your round window. Oval window na. So my vibration na nang nangyayari dito. And then, because of the vibration, because your, let's get oriented muna ha. So this is your scala vestibuli. This is your scala tympani over here. No? Ang scala vestibuli nyo and your scala tympani, meron siyang fluid we call your perilin. Because of the vibration of the, that happens here, no, the there is pushing of the perilin of the scala vestibuli until it also pushes and then there would also 
the changes in the pressure ng scale at timpani. No? Until such time, lalabas siya ang vibration sa round window. So, pressure waves, no? after the stave strikes the oval window, the pressure waves in the perilim, no? conveyed from the scala vestibuli to your scala timpani, vestibuli to your scala timpani, pressure waves in the endolymph also uh, occur. Kasi nga dito, merong change ng pressure and then there would be current na. There would also be pressure waves in the endolymph. Dito sa, sa inner portion, no? inner portion ng cochlea ninyo, this is your vestibular membrane. This is your cochlear duct. Your cochlear duct has it, my fluid then. We call it your endolymph. So here in your scala vestibuli and scala tympani, we have perilymph. In your cochlear duct, no? cochlear duct sa loob, we have your endolymph. Because of the change in pressure here, there will also be a uh, change in pressure inside. So the pressure waves in the endolymph cause the hair cells. Now hair cells, this one, the hair cells of uh, your cochlea, be bent against the pectoral membrane, towards the pectoral membrane. And neurotransmitter is released to sensory neurons because here, Nga, meron ng uh, cochlear branch coming from the vestibulocochlear nerve, no? wherein the vibration na nangyari, mechanical vibration lang of the fluid of the perilymph and the endolymph, the endolymph in particular, no? was changed into an electrical signal through the cochlear branch of the vestibulocochlear nerve. No? From the mechanical vibration of sound because of the distortion of the fluids, no? the stimulus from the mechanical vibration because of the help of the uh, spiral organ or your organ of 40, the mechanical vibration was uh, changed into an electrical signal, which is a receptor potential. So the auditory pathway, cochlear neurons in the cranial, cochlear neurons, cochlear branch, in the cochle vestibular cochlear nerve, and in the medulla, and on the same side, the right ear towards the right medulla, left ear, left medulla, towards the midbrain, ng impulse towards the thalamus, and auditory cortex located in your temporal lobe. So each side of the brain receives input from both ears. Okay, from both ears. Left ear, left brain, right ear, right temporal lobe, auditory cortex. That's for hearing. How about for the equilibrium? No? We have static and dynamic equilibrium. Static senses position relative to the gravity as when head is tilted or a car is speeding up or slowing down. As compared to your dynamic equilibrium, sense of position in response to head movement, as in spinning movements. Dynamic, static equilibrium in relation to gravity. Okay? That ends my lecture. Hopefully, it helped you. And thank you for your participation. Bye-bye.